Hi, everybody. I, I'm thinking it's five o'clock. Are we ready to to go? Or do we have a quorum? Yes, ma'am. Okay, awesome. So good evening. Today is uh, December 16th, 2020, and it is 501. Um, as a quorum of the committee is in attendance by our, via our video conference, I would like to call to order the meeting of the Central Health Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, the first item of business is public communication. Members of the public who wish to make comments during the public communication portion of the meeting must have registered with Central Health via the online form or by telephone no later than 3.30 p.m. today. Anais, do we have anybody registered to make public comments? I have nobody registered today. Okay. Um, so we'll now proceed to the agenda. The first agenda item is approve the minutes of the June 17th, 2020 meeting of the Central Health Budget and Finance Committee. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Dr. Bell. I move, I move that the committee approve the minutes of the June 17th, 2020 meeting of the Central Health Budget and Finance Committee. And I right. second. We have um, a motion by Dr. Bell, second by uh, Chair Greenberg. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, no abstentions. All right. Moving on to agenda item two, receive a report on and accept the preliminary November 2020 financial statements for Central Health and the Community Care Collaborative. Lisa Owens will be presenting. Okay, good evening. Can you see my screen? We can. Okay. Thank you. All right, great. Well, welcome uh, to the early uh, 2021 financials. For all that budget work, we have we have the results. <laughs> um, things are going uh, going along excellent. I want to hit on a few highlights. Um, so one thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to move uh, into the documents a little bit more and, and hit a little bit more on this, is tax collection. Net property tax collection for November is down. I do have some more information on that, and we are watching that closely with our other government partners. Um, but that is just 1% of the levy. Um, our healthcare delivery is at 16 million for the two months ending. And we do have an LPPF balance of about 8 million at the end of the year. I'm sorry, at the end of November. Our balance sheet continues to have um, high, uh, higher than prior year uh, cash and cash equivalents that we've talked about in uh, earlier financial presentation that cash uh, continues to carry forward um, and our current assets are at $419 million. Um, we have our, again, our restricted cash for the LPPF is at $8.3 million at the end of November. And then our capital assets, um, you'll see year over year did go up about um, a little bit over, um, uh, just around a million for the land purchase that we did make at the end of uh, last year, last fiscal year. So our total assets as of 11.30 are $658 million. We continue to have a very um, low ratio of current assets um, if you take into consideration that we do record the deferred tax revenue. Uh, that revenue will come in in the next couple months, January and February, but it is due, so we record that. Um, but other current liabilities of accounts payable, salaries payable, and other deferred revenue uh, remains um, uh, it lower, um, but our total current liabilities with that deferred revenue for tax, um, which is due, uh, is at $259 million. And uh, our restricted um, non-current liabilities are at $14 million. That includes, again, the LPPF uh, dollars that are held uh, restricted. And then uh, total liabilities of $274 million total liabilities and net assets of $658 million. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about tax revenue. Um, our budget this year is $234 million. Uh, we did um, see an increase in assessed values as well as increased our tax rate. Uh, and you'll see that year over year, our tax revenue is about $7 million less as of this time last year. And so a couple things we are looking at the date that notices went out, uh, the delayed hearings or the volume of hearings that needed to take place, and um, when notices were sent out, uh, and it's our understanding those may have been delayed about a month year, uh, compared to the prior year, which will impact the collection. But we do get timely collection from 
when those taxes are collected, they are transferred to us in a very timely manner. Uh, we have watched um, the first uh, two weeks of December, our year over year comparison is right on track. We had collected about $9 million uh, in the first two weeks of December last year. We've collected about 9 million so far. We expect that to pick up significantly um, with the bulk of the tax dollars being in December and January. But you'll remember that with changes in tax law and um, the process for collecting those taxes, um, that some of that did shift more into the January timeframe last year. Uh, and we anticipate that uh, as well. So we are watching it closely. Um, we, we, so as of um, around today, we still are looking at a $7 million difference year over year, but we do anticipate that to be collected um, when it's due, which is by January 31st, but we'll continue to monitor and keep you updated. Our lease revenue for the um, downtown campus, uh, just at $1.7 million, and then other revenue, which is going to be interest income. Uh, so total uh, sources available in uh, through um, November 30th at $4 million. We did have healthcare delivery expenditures of about $8 million in November, uh, and administrative expenses of just over $500,000. So our total expenditures uh, or uses of funds at $8.7 million in November and year to date at $17 million. Our healthcare delivery uh, dollars um, in primary care, we um, again um, see our year over year. This year um, we do have that historical year um, to compare and, and we are tracking well. Um, with our partners delivering primary care, a lot of um, early estimates as we start the year, um, but continue to, to deliver a lot of care throughout the network. Uh, our specialty care and uh, behavioral health, I have more information on a later slide. Um, pharmacy at 1.6 million. Um, we are 17% of the way through the year, so at, um, just under 12% there, we're very close to tracking uh, on track there. And then all other healthcare services, a lot of our um, reproductive and sexual health uh, funds for LARCs uh, will be found in that line item. So total um, healthcare services of 10.8 million. We continue to fund the premium assistance program uh, and those uh, funds um, are just at a million dollars, just over a million dollars. Um, we also, <clears throat> you'll remember, have some funds to raise awareness and get the word out about ACA enrollment. So most of those uh, as were, I guess, yesterday, the last day of open enrollment. Um, we'll see those expenses in the November, December, even maybe in the January timeframe. Uh, but um, those expenses um, are on track with what we budgeted. And then we did increase that budget this year to um, accommodate um, the additional uh, program needs in the premium assistance programs. Our healthcare facilities and campus redevelopment, we continue to fund um, the campus demolition, uh, as well as our healthcare operating costs and um, expenses, interest expenses on our debt. Our total healthcare delivery for the month of November at just about $8.1 million. And again, through the fiscal year, through November, two months at $15.8 million. So we do have more information about um, healthcare delivery. Um, you'll remember last year we were making the slide to kind of show healthcare services in two entities. Uh, we have rich history now with a full year of some of those contracts in central health. Um, so you can um, reference our prior year to date um, this year. Um, and it looks like um, <clears throat> We did, um, we're still working on getting our formatting right, so we will get this updated. We do have a little over um, $1.1 $1 .1 million in reproductive and sexual health. It's just down in this slide, so we'll get that fixed for the next meeting. Um, but our um, primary care, specialty care, and behavioral health there as well, and we have some more information on the next couple slides. So no um, unanticipated or large swings in our dollars. Um, we've been tracking um, well on expenses um, for operating as well. Um, one 
two things I would point out. Um, we will start to see our healthcare operating costs um, go up a little bit as we are very excited to be adding an entire medical case management team to serve our patients. Uh, those positions are being onboarded as they were approved in the budget. Um, one of our business cases that was reviewed and incorporated into our budget this year. Um, so we're very excited about adding an entire uh, medical case management team this year, and you'll see that in the operating costs um, supporting uh, our MAP and MAP basic patients. Primary care, we do have a broken out by provider um, <clears throat> with uh, community care, uh, our largest partner um, delivering just at 14% of their contract uh, in primary care. And overall, 14% uh, year to date. Again, as um, we continue to um, serve patients in our clinics and um, have a more of a steady state in those programs. For specialty care, um, a lot of our programs um, have been in place uh, for a while now. Um, we will start to note any new programs as they come on board. Um, we'll add some notes over here as we get further into the year. And I'm sure uh, my colleague, John Morgan, would love to join me later in the year as we start to see um, more information uh, and have more data. Um, but for our first, just first two months of the year, um, a dollar, the dollars are just under a million dollars um, in specialty care. Uh, it is about 8% of our budget. And again, some of that, um, some of those programs have not started yet um, or are not uh, being funded by central health at this point. Um, and, uh, but our uh, history here is um, really good reference for the prior year to date. So we'll continue to elaborate on this. Uh, and again, very early in the year, just two months into the year, um, um, continuing to deliver the specialty care um, and lift up new services. Um, and some of these services may have started later in the year with our partners. So with that, I will answer any questions. I don't think I have any, Lisa. I thought you did a, a great job on explaining why our, our property tax revenue, that was one of the first things I saw. Um, you did a great job explaining why it, it seems to be short, but we should be catching up in January. Um, and obviously it's so hard to challenge, to tell where things are going to shake out when you're only two months into your fiscal year. So, um, does anybody else have any questions on the board? No. All right. Um, I'm not, I'm not seeing anybody. So like, you'll have to unmute yourself if you do have a question, but, um, with that, I'd love to take a motion. Do you want me to do the CCC real quick? Sorry. Oh yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, thank you. Nope. Sorry. Also, um, very steady state, similar to last year. Um, uh, the budget for FY20 is the same as the prior year, you'll recall. Um, so we did, um, we are right at $24 million in assets, just almost the same as last year at this time. Um, and our accrued liabilities are for, um, the mostly the healthcare services that uh, we'll talk about in just a minute. We do have a little bit higher deferred revenue. What that is, is um, revenue that we are reserving for DISRIP for potential future audits and potential future recoupment. Um, but um, as that program has more risk, um, we've, def we've reserved a little bit more uh, in that program. So our total net assets at 13.4 million as of November 30th, Again, liabilities and that assets at 24 million. Um, the, we carry forward, we brought forward into um, fiscal year 21, gosh, I got used to saying that, uh, $11.8 million, a little bit of interest revenue there for $11.8 million in sources of funds. And then again, our uses of funds, healthcare delivery, and early year dollars uh, for those DISRIP projects. We still have those three. DISRIP providers, so $3.4 million in healthcare delivery through November. And then again, just a little bit more information, a good, good historical analysis here. Um, uh, those programs continue in the same um, contracts uh, in the same areas as last year. Um, with our partnership with Integral Care um, at 
um, 17%, and again, the post-acute care program, and then uh, just a little bit of operations this year at 13%, so total healthcare expenses there at $2.6 million. Oops. I can answer any questions there as well. Short, sweet, and to the point. Um, I don't have any questions here either. Do, do any of the other board members? All right. Well, now I will entertain a motion. You're on mute, Manager Bell. Charles, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to move that the committee recommend that the board accept the preliminary November 2020 financial statements for Central Health and the Community Care Collaborative. Second. Motion by Dr. Bell, second by Chair Greenberg. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Great. Um, moving on to the final agenda item. Confirm the next regular com committee meeting date, time, and location. <laughs> Managers are next regularly scheduled Central Health Budget and Finance Committee meeting is tentatively scheduled for Wednesday, January 20th, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. at the Central Health Administrative Offices, 1111 East Cesar Chavez Street, Austin, Texas, 78702 and we're remotely by video conference, depending on the status of the governor's <clears throat> disaster declaration and stay at home orders. At this time, I'm ready to accept a motion for adjournment. I move adjournment. And do we have a second? A second. <laughs> All right. uh, motion by Dr. Bell, again, another uh, second by Chair Greenberg. All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, I didn't think so. All right, we will see y'all in shortly at 5.30 for board meeting. Yes. Thank you, Manager Oliver. Thank you, Manager. Appreciate it. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.